Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Thursday, 23rd of March 2023. In today's Mill News, we start off with this from millfc.co.uk. Mill versus Birmingham City to be shown live on Sky Sports. Yes, they have picked a game of ours to show live on Sky Sports. What does that mean? Not much because it's not going to be moved because it's a midweek game. I think it's our last midweek night game that we've got left. Um, we do have Easter Monday game, but that's 3 o'clock kickoff. Uh, so, Mill Sky Bet Championship fixture against Permanent City will now be shown live on Sky Sports. The match, the Lions Penalty at home in 23 24, will still be played on Tuesday the 18th of April, but will now kick off at the slightly later time of 8 pm. The tickets for the game at the den are on sale now. La da 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 da. So yeah, um, I t I don't know the 15 minutes delay in the kickoff time time. I don't know if that's going to affect uh, any people. Obviously, the attendance for midweek games is generally quite a lot down. The reason for that is because some of the season ticket holders they literally cannot make midweek games because they live a long way away, and it's easy for them to travel well, on a Saturday morning, but they can't really do that. Um, midweek, but um, they can watch this game live on Sky Sports, so there you go. And now, moving on to obviously, I told you at the start of the week uh, that various Millwall players will be playing one per day, and yesterday it was uh, Romain SA, and today it was George Savile. George Savile played for Northern Ireland in their. Amazing 2 0 win over San Marino. They absolutely thrashed him 2 0. Yeah. And uh, George Savile played 72 minutes. 72 minutes. So, wasn't completely uh, run into the ground. Playing a different role, uh, if you can see here. So, we sort it by rating in the orange. And he's the ninth best player, 6.8. But if you go over and go by shots, he had the first, most, third most shots. Even though he was only on, on the pitch for 72 minutes, they played him in a more attacking role, um, more supportive role. Because uh, obviously, San Marino got a lot of defending to do. Not really a lot going forward. So, why does George Savile need to sit back? He doesn't. He can uh, go forward and be more of an attacking midfielder, so that's what they did. And he had three shots, but none of them were on target because I think he probably wasn't used to shooting. So rarely does it for Mill. Not really. What well, he's in, he's in the Mill team to break up play uh, and uh, do that kind of thing. So there you go. He won one aerial. And he had fifty nine touches. Um. So let's have a look and see what he did. Um, so he got fouled three times, dispossessed once, had one unscheduled touch. Uh, defensively, like I said, uh, he didn't he didn't do anything defensively. They literally played him uh, as an attacking player. Obviously, be interesting to see the highlights. Um, I don't know if that'll be available on BBC Northern Ireland or on uh, YouTube or, or where you can get that. Because interestingly, I think. Before when Sky, Sky would just pump out all of the uh, highlights of these games in, in like min, little mini videos, five minute long, whatever, on YouTube. But, so I don't know if Wire Play will be doing that or how that works. So, but there you go. Um, so, yeah, literally no defensive work for him to do. This is all about attacking and trying to break down San Marino's uh, parking of the bus. Which they managed to do. They won two 0 but I mean, you would think they would that they would do better than that. I mean, it's generally accepted in football that when a better team plays a lesser team, three 0 is the result. Um, that's pretty much standard. You get your one goal, you get your second goal, you, you ease off, but you carry on pushing forward. You make the substitutes, and they want to score, and then you get a third goal, and then that's it. Like, um, unless you're deliberately trying to run up the score, 3 nils is the result you want to go for. 
So, passing wise, uh, if we just bring that up, so one key pass, 44 passes, 79.6 passing accuracy, three crosses, one accurate, no long balls, and no accurate long balls. So, there you go, that pretty much sums up Jules Savile playing for uh, Northern Ireland in a San Marino near in uh in the Italian peninsula, although not technically in Italy itself. Um and now I think they've got Latvia in the next game. So that we we can look forward to that. Now moving on to this from londonnewsonline.co.uk a mill boss expecting England under eighteen winger remain essay to be a starter on his side next season. Next season. Um, so Mill manager Garra is expecting Romain SA to be making starts for the club next season and reckons the prospects uh, England call up reflects the positive impact he has made in senior football. The young winger made his under-18 debut for the three lines in a 2-1 win over Croatia earlier this week. SA signed a long-term contract with the Lions in January and has made eight appearances in all competitions this season, all of them off the bench. It's quite a nice uh, recognition for his involvement in impacting games. Rao told the South London Press. It's another nice story to add what has uh, already been a positive season. Radders has got called back up by Wales. Remain has been called up and recognised by England, which is a bit of a challenge with the young Premier League players around. Uh, but Remain at 17, he's playing in the first team and coming on to play regular minutes. It's a real nice recognition of his talent and where the club is at the moment. And there he is. There's that picture from the other day, clear as crystal. Um, there he is, centre right, and he's. That pink and black boots. It's a difficult one for, for a manager sometimes because he's more than talented enough to start in our team and could give us something different. At the moment, when the games are so important, there's such a settled start in 11 to a certain degree. Uh, it's quite hard to take that gamble. At any other stage of the season, he would have started the game or two by now. What he does coming on late is that he can unlock the door, break through a tight defence, a little bit of quality. He's a lovely feel for a pass and a way of a pass, little things. And maybe go unnoticed a little bit. He's very, very creative in the final third. He can beat people. He can take people on and open the game up. Uh, we lack that a bit against Southfield. You can pass the ball all you went. And we had 70% of the ball. At some point, someone's got to uh, beat someone and open the game up. Or make a pass which opens the game up. Roman's got that and we'll see it come out more and more as the season develops. Uh, potentially into next season as well. I definitely feel he can be a start for us next year. He could be a starter now, but this is already getting him... Are ready to have a real, real impact next year. So the headline's a bit misleading. He says he's more or less definitely going to be a starter next season, as in someone who could be considered to start games in the first team. He's in the first team squad now. Um, he did play for the under 21s, not like not the game on Tuesday, but the game before that. Um, but yeah. Um, So, Gary Rout saying he could start now, but he's choosing not to do that because the games are so important that, like, he could ruin him if he does something, if he makes it a mistake because he's not got that experience to not know not to do that. Um, then that could obviously turn the crowd against him. Um, just, um, Make put a, put a weight on his shoulders that like he feels like he let everyone down. Like it's so important that we get in that that um, position. But that could happen at the end of the game. You could, when you bring him on, that could still happen. Like if he doesn't, if he gives a pass way high up the pitch and then we get countered, and then they end up scoring, like, and then everyone's looking at him. That could still happen now when you're playing him now. So I mean. If you've got to coach him, you've got to tell him, look, seriously, and then tell him what you want him to do and say, do what you, do what you know you can do, but remember, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. Um, it's very important that we don't blah, blah, blah. That's what coaching is, isn't it? So there you go. Um, but like I said, I've said this before. Did I say this in the video the other day? Managers don't like they don't like players who break the mold 
I think I said, did I say this for talking about Roy Hodgson? Um, they don't like creative players. Managers don't. Managers would want to win every game one nil if they could. With all of the players doing what they were told to do before the game, no renegades, no Maradonas, no old pick up the ball, run fifty yards of it, and here in the top corner. Did, did we? Did we? Did they tell you to do that before the game? No, of course they don't tell you to do that. They tell you to do the basic things, patterns of play, and all that shit, um, set pieces, all of that. Believe it or not, we actually the set pieces that we do that don't end up getting anything. They are actually planned out. Um, so yeah. Creative players, probably not under Gary Routes. So, I mean, you've got to, you've got to do, you've got to allow that part of the game. Though you can't just sideline that and beat it out of him, because then he's going to become just as useless as the other, as some other players. Now, here we go, Gary Rout again. This is from SouthernNews.co.uk. Millwall boss reluctant to judge January arrivals before the end of the season. So Gary Rout expects Oliver Burke and Duncan Watmore to feature regularly for the Lions before the end of the season. So interesting dovetailing what we've just heard. These are the two players basically that are keeping Romain Essi out of the team. And also Vogel Sam, which a lot of people are slagging off, but he's, on, he's got our most assists at the moment. Um, so Gary Rout is reluctant to judge Millwall's January signings before the end of the season given they're difficult to start to life at the den. Oliver Burke has scored once in nine matches since rejoining the Lions on loan from Werder Bremen, while Duncan Watmore took his total for the season up to six goals. I'm not for Millwall. We'll be striking against QPR last month, although five of them came at former club Miller's Row. Uh, in terms of attacking, I'll put the pair of arguably struggled to fulfil expectations in the early stages of their time in South London. However, injury and illnesses clearly impacted them in the last few weeks. Well, both have struggled to nail down a spot in the starting lineup over Andros Vogelsammer and George Honeyman. That's the thing, though. That's the um, that's the thing you can't measure. So you can measure how many goals have Burke and Watmore scored, how many assists have they scored. You can measure the things on who scored.com, the ratings that they got. What you can't measure is what did Andres Vogelsammer and George Honeyman do when they saw these two players come in and thought, oh shit. I might be out of the team here. I might not be playing now. And they sorted themselves out and jigged themselves up and got their shit together and started playing better. You can't measure that. Uh, well, yeah, you probably could. Um, uh, Rao admitted before Saturday's defeat at home to Huddersfield Town that Burke and Watford were almost chosen to start, but the manager ultimately decided to stick with an unchanged team for the third successive time. However, he was keen to highlight his confidence that they will be able to play a big part in Mills playoff running as they are hold a three point gap over the seventh place called Norwich City going into the final eight games of the season. I think it's always difficult, he told Mills then. Both have had a slightly sporadic start for different uh, reasons. Duncan picked up an injury and then he's been here also. So he's all been in and out of the team through no fault of his own or ours. Burke is the same. He was ill for a week. So he was out of the team, in the team, out of the team. What they've done is that they've given us really good options out wide. <coughs> I would expect them to play a huge part in the last few games. I think that's why we brought them to the club. Uh, they're both very, very attacking options. We might leave ourselves a little bit less defensively strong. But at this stage of the season, two have that in there. Both almost striker type wingers. They're good options to have. I think they're both good characters. They fit in with a really well and really quickly. I'm really excited for them to be here. It's probably easier to judge that at the end of the season rather than a handful of games. Yes, indeed. And on that note, thank you for watching. Bye.